I'm excited to be able to welcome you in public again to a public event for the National Day of Prayer. Everyone that's in here um, gathered with us publicly, but we also are going to welcome the WTGN listening audience as they participate by radio and our TV44 viewers, both live and then tonight at the 9 p.m. re-air. So we welcome all of you to participate in this, the 70th annual observance of the National Day of Prayer. My name is Teresa Lee. I'm the Allen County Coordinator. And every year I love to think about this blanket of prayer that covers our nation because it starts at prayer breakfasts and the East Coast and lunches and dinners and suppers and evening services all the way from the East Coast, all the way to the West Coast, from the North to the South, to Hawaii, to Alaska. Don't you think it's just like a blanket of the wonder and glory of God that his people will stand up and honor him on a day like today? And even tonight, there's going to be a prayer in the square for 6 p at 6 p.m., and there shall be no rain, right? <laughs> Amen. Okay, so we are really going to be crying out this year, morning, noon, and night, for the Lord to move in our nation. This year's theme is the Lord, pour out your, your love, your life, and your liberty. And I thought a lot about this verse, and I thought, really, they're asking for the blessing of the Lord. And I have heard people say, oh, don't say, God bless America. Say, America, bless God. But I think that when his people gather, and they all ask him to intervene in the affairs of men, that does bless God. Don't you agree? <laughs> so I think we're going to do both today. And we know God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And today we're going to seek him all across the nation. When I was thinking about the blessings of God, we often think about prosperity or material things. But today I want us to really think bigger than that and ask the blessings. Maybe he, ask him for a clear understanding of his will. Maybe we can ask him to bless us with strong voices preaching an uncompromising gospel. Maybe we can ask him to bless us with a hunger for righteousness that will stir people from the entanglements and from their complacency. We can ask him for the blessings of tender-hearted love for one another and mercy and compassion, graciousness, patience, kindness, goodness, those fruits of the Spirit, and also bless us with the courage to stand unswavering as believers in every sphere that he's placed us. Well, how about we ask him to bless us with a resolve to focus on the eternal so we don't waste so much of our life on the trivial. May he bless us with clear convictions that will inspire us to lead lives truly devoted to God that other people can see when they observe our lives. I've thought a lot lately about unity. You know, different people say we're going to unify America. And I think I don't think we can unify America unless we're willing to lay down all of our convictions. And so we're not willing to do that. Amen. And so we must... Um, Think about unity being a goal that we set for believers, that we will continue to pursue all the parts of God's word that he asks us to live up to. We have an entirely different operating system than the people of the world. They're not going to do things the way we do them. And it's hard sometimes to watch the news because it's so obvious how much disunity is out there. But we cannot... We can love them and we can serve them, but we cannot assimilate their beliefs and trade the teachings of Christ for the popular convictions of our day. We live in days when light and dark must separate. There has to be a clear distinction, and we must be courageous and resolved to be in unity with one thing, the basic truths of God's word. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. There is one way. That message is not bad news. It's good news because we do have the way that leads to life. 
So in the midst of all this clashing, let's hold fast. It's just light and dark. It's just, what, what fellowship does light have with darkness? You're not going to be able to unite. So let's just lay down that false goal. What they really mean is that you will lay down your convictions and say nothing when they do wrong. And that's what we need to do when we pray. We need to look at what in our world is lacking and pray God's word into it. So hold fast in this time. There's only one God, and he alone can solve the problems of our day. May the blessings of the Lord rest on us today as we pray. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 43, 10 through 13. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know me, believe me, and remain steadfast to me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared the future and have saved the nation in times of danger, and I have sworn that I am God. Where there was no strange and alien God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Yes, from the time of the first existence of day and from this day forth, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver you out of my hand. I will work, and who can hinder or reverse it? Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, creator, the giver of life, we thank you right now for your presence even in this place. We thank you, God, for this gathering, a national day of prayer. Although you said in your word, Lord, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. But God, we come at this present time asking you, God, to look upon us in the name of Jesus. We're asking you, O oh God, to hear us this morning. 
as we make supplication before you. We ask you, O oh God, that you would help us. We hear the word echoing in our ears and in our heart as you spoke in times of old. And you said, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, Lord, you said, then will you hear from heaven. You would forgive our sins and you would heal our land. And Lord, our land needs healing, our state, our nation needs healing. And oh God, we come to you right now asking you for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We pray for the restoration of our cities. We pray for the recovery of our cities. We pray for recovery of our nations and for our states, Lord God. We pray that your people would come together and turn from wickedness and turn from rebelliousness, that they would turn from sin and turn to you, O oh God, and that they would return unto you, Lord God, that there may be a healing, that there may be a restoration, that there may be a recovery. Bring America to her knees, O oh God, that she would return Oh, God, to the place and to the condition, oh, God, that you have uh, purposed for her. Father, bless us in this place. In the name of Jesus, as leaders, oh, God, that we would come together and that we would uni unite ourselves together and seek your Lord God, that we would humble ourselves before your God and recognize that we are nothing without you. Touch us, O oh God. Give us of your grace and of your strength. And Father, we bless you for it. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 122, it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. And so today we pray for Israel and the cooperation between our two nations. Would you join me in prayer? God, your word declares that there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord Jehovah. Your word makes it clear throughout your word that your focus has been Israel, your chosen people, the city where you have chosen to place your name. And now we, your children, your believers here in America, we want what you want. And so in every subject we pray about today, but especially this one, we want to reflect your heart. We want to reflect your purpose and so, God, we just ask, we beg of you today that our country would continue its alliance with Israel. And we ask that any attempt from other countries and other groups to pressure our leadership away from this alliance will not succeed. We pray for a hedge and for strength. And that just your will would continue to hold that we might uh, be in allegiance with you. We know very well that your purpose will not change. We know that your outcome of the future will not change. And so today, even though it may be small, we ask that this root of our heritage, that there's always been this allegiance, would continue. And we know that though this is just one part of all the politics and all the beliefs of our country, God, it's you who have taught us that it's the little things we hold on to that in time create big things and big opportunities. And so, Father, we just ask one more time that America not abandon its alliance with Israel, no matter the opposition, that we would continue to trust you. You are sovereign. 
you are God. And we pray for Israel. And we seek your favor, your strength today and always. And we're just so thankful we can pray in the victorious name of Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. I'll be praying against terrorism. Father, we come to you with great gratitude for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the one that loves us so much that he covered the multitude of our sins. And we pray that our sins would not be a reproach to you, God. We pray that our repentance would again exalt this nation to righteousness, so, Lord, that you would protect us under your wings. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that is alive in this earth, leading and guiding us. We thank you that you have made us aware in your word that we have an enemy named the devil who desires to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. But you have come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So, God, we thank you for protecting our life. And we ask you right now that this nation and all around the world that we would submit ourselves to God so that we would have a divine resistance against the devil so that he must flee from us. We thank you, God, for allowing us to walk in truth. We come against the lies of the enemy. So not only do we pray against terrorism as it relates to missiles and bombs, but we pray against the lies of the enemy that are running rampant in this nation around the world. We pray against all of his methods of terror to strike fear in the hearts of believers and unbelievers alike. We ask you, God, that you would exist, Father God, in us to a point, Lord, that we will be able to pray righteous prayers, God, and that you would hear us and move on our behalf. We ask God for protection in our schools against terrorism, Father, against our churches, against our government buildings against terrorism. We pray, Father God, that you would give our intelligence community, Father God, the information that they need to know when the enemy is planning attacks, God, so that they might be thwarted. We thank you finally, God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper, and we declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, it's my great privilege today to lift up the first responders in this community and all over our nation. I have many who are in that field and they need prayer coverage more than ever right now. And so let's just pray for them. Father, we just thank you for this set apart day, this national day of prayer. And I'm just so honored to be here and to lift up your first responders. I thank you, Father, that they are brave. I thank you every day that they walk in courage and boldness as they constantly risk their lives, God, for others. You said greater love has no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. And I thank you, Lord, for those who are protecting and serving our community and our nation. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven are the servants, and we just honor them today, Lord. I pray, especially in this time of turmoil in our nation, Psalms 91 would cover them. Cover their lives, Lord, and thank you for hiding them under your great wings of refuge. And show yourself strong to them in times of danger. And send your angelic hosts around them as they serve. And Father, we also pray for godly counsel and wisdom in all of their lives. We pray that you touch their minds as they see so many hard situations every day. And may they have your peace, Lord, that passes all of their understanding. And we thank you that their emotions are healthy and they're able to deal with everything that goes through their heart and minds every day, Father God. And I also lift up the spouses, Father God, and, and the children of the first responders. I pray that you keep them strong. And when they're not, we thank you that you're there even in their weakness, God. And we thank you that you comfort them and you show them ways to love these first responders. And we just thank you, Lord, for all these things. And we know that you hear us when we pray because you're our Father. And we just glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. It is my distinct honor to pray for our U.S. military today. Today, Lord, we lift up our United States military and pray for those fine young men and women who have served this great nation who are serving currently 
and who will serve this nation in the future. For those who defend us from our enemies and keep us safe on the world stage, we ask your protection for them as they carry out the duties which they are called to. Lord, be ever mindful of those serving in the United States Army, in the Navy, in the Air Force, the U.S. Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, and for those who serve this nation in the National Guard. We pray for those who are serving in places of peace and in places of conflict, and even those who are currently serving where war rages. We lift up those who defend our embassies around the world in foreign nations and for those who keep the peace domestically. We pray for those who face dangers around the world on a daily basis and for those who are first on the scene when natural disasters strike in the United States and abroad. We pray for the Joint Chiefs of Staff as they advise our President on matters of global conflict and make split-second decisions on how to keep this nation free and safe. And finally, God, we pray for our Commander-in-Chief, Joe Biden, that he receives counsel and information about world events and conflicts and that he may make the right decisions to keep the United States of America the land of the free and the home of the brave. We know, Heavenly Father, that all who serve this great nation do so with the highest intentions for good over evil. We also know that no country can long survive without your blessing. So we call on you today to bless the United States of America. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and your Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I'm praying for racial re reconciliation. Why don't you say that word, reconciliation? reconciliation? Words carry great weight and great power. And one of the strategies, I believe, while the enemy fights the church so much with regards to racial uh, tension and segregation is because he knows the real power and blessing is commanded upon those who join themselves together in unity because everybody gets blessed from the top all the way down. It rolls down even to our children. So let's go after this right now. Father, we thank you that today... We are believing in expectation for good to come from the painful events, Lord, which we've witnessed unashamed evil unleashed upon another simply because of the color of their skin. Lord, in many um, uh, Lord, feelings, we're starting at square one again with regards to going after, Lord God, reconciliation with regards to the races. And Lord, here there's uh, overwhelming indictment is in our nation that, Lord, we today are humbly asking that, Father, you would help us. Lord, you would bring about, Lord God, such a sense, Lord God of the spirit of reconciliation. Lord, we declare that we are needy, that we are truly, Lord, broken without you. And Lord, we Lord, speak even now that we are brokenhearted by the stories of marginalized people and are asking, Lord, for you to bring about great healing. Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha, and we believe, Lord, you are more than enough. Lord, we pray for justice for all who have suffered, not only in the United States of America, but also in our city, Lord, here in Lima. Father, comfort all those who mourn. Strengthen slackened hands and weaken feeble, tottering knees, Lord. Let them not give up the good fight of faith. Lord, even may the recent tragic deaths not exacerbate further acts of violence, but may your love provoke us to listen, to learn, to repent, and to reconcile. 
For, Lord, we believe you've created every wonderful nuance and diverse cultural traits of people groups which must be celebrated by your church. Lord, we know that all men are created by your wisdom and are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we are tired in the church of competition, and we are not looking to conformity either, Lord, but, Lord, we want to celebrate people in the spirit of agreement. So, Lord, may your love make room for everybody to come and have a seat at the table. Lord, we thank you and believe that the church has already today received the ministry of reconciliation. Father, may those who are steeped in hatred for another come to, Lord, repentance. Father, challenge any and all biases in our own hearts and in our own minds. Lord, may this city of Lima be a city of refuge, a place of hospitality, Lord, for all, and a place where everyone feels welcome. Father, send forth your spirit, Lord God, to this land. Lord, send forth, Lord God, a reawakening, Lord God, of truth to the wounded, to the confused and frustrated generation of our time. And bring about the ministry of reconciliation and revival today. Jesus, we believe that you've broken down the middle and hostile wall of partition and that, Lord, indeed, you have become our peace. And, Lord, out of that peace, Lord, flows righteousness. And so we declare today, let your justice and your righteousness roll on down through this city and through this country in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity to read a quote by President Ronald Reagan given in 1983 to the American Bar Association. He said, it's not good enough to have equal access to our law. We must also have equal access to the higher law, the law of God. George Washington warned that morality could not prevail in exclusion of religious principles. And Jefferson asked, can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when even removed from their firm basis, a conviction in the minds of people that these liberties are the gifts of God. We must preserve the noble promise of the American dream for every man, woman, and child in this land. And make no mistake, we can preserve it, and we will. That promise was not created by America. It was given to America as a gift from a loving God, a gift proudly recognized by the language of liberty and the world's greatest charters of freedom, our Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. The explicit promise in the Declaration that we're endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights was meant for all of us. It wasn't meant to be limited or perverted by special privilege or by double standards. Trusting in God and helping one another, we can and we will preserve the dream of America, the last best hope of man on earth. Please join me as I pray for our president and our national leaders. On this national day of prayer, Father, I want to lift my voice to intercede for the leaders of our nation and our state. We all realize that you raise up kings and you put down kings. And our president, Joe Biden, occupies his office by your permission. I pray that he is willing to allow you to provide direction for our nation and guide him to pursue a path of morality and righteousness, which we have all known in the past. I pray that Vice President Harris will also allow God to give direction to her life and her office, willing and able to be a help to President and his great nation. In the book of Jeremiah, you said, Hear, O earth, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will put obstacles before this people. Fathers and sons alike will stumble over them. Neighbors and friends will perish. God, there is overwhelming evidence that 94% of the writings of our founding fathers were directly affected by the word of God. And the reason that our government has survived and flourished 
for these 200 plus years as a republic with a constitution is because it was directly founded on the principles of the word of Almighty God. This was the ancient past that we walked in at one time. Father, it cannot be emphasized too strongly here today and too often that this nation was not found by religions but Christians. And on this day, as we think about our national leaders, please provide them with reminders each day of why they decided to dedicate their lives to public service and use that commitment to encourage and strengthen them and keep them accountable to you. On behalf of your kingdom and the people of the United States of America, may they always recall that they are first servants of God Most High and second servants of the American public. And in so doing, may they serve always in humility as unto you, O Father. And never let any of us forget that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we ask this in the name that is above every name, yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray for courage this morning. For God's word is, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Father God, as we stand be before you today, we just say thank you for this opportunity that we come in together, not as a denomination, not as a church, but in the purity of the church, Father, we bow before you in humble submission as the body of Christ. And we thank you for that, Lord God in heaven. We thank you for bringing us together, not as a church, not as a ministry, but as the body of Christ. And we just thank you for the opportunity that we should come and we should call upon your name. Because we truly believe in your word and pray, Lord God in heaven, that you would give us the courage and the strength that we might walk in the righteousness of your word, that we might walk in the light of your word, that we might humble ourselves before you, that we might call that devil a lie, and we know that he is and the author of one. And Father, that we might come together as one in you. We just pray your blessings now that you would wrap your loving arms of protection around us and keep us, Holy Father, that we might be able, merciful Father, to appear before those that don't know you and call them out of the darkness to in this marvelous light that they might have this walk, Lord God in heaven, that we have. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you, Heavenly Father. We pray for these men of God and these women of God that come before us today and call on your name. For it's your name, merciful Father, that woke us up this morning. This was your call, not ours, but it was you, Lord God. And so, Lord God, it's that we honor you. We revere you, Lord God, and we need you, Father. We truly need you. Our children need you. Our grandchildren need you. Our brothers and sisters need you. We need you, Lord God in heaven. We want to show the devil that he's a liar. He cannot consume us if our hand is in your hand. And Lord, here they are. We want to connect with you that we might know you and that we, Lord God in heaven, might walk in the light so that those are in darkness might see your marvelous work through us. So bless you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity. My heart is light today. I feel great because of you and because of these, your people. Bless us, Heavenly Father, as no other can. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we ask, we pray, we thank you, Father. Amen. This morning I'm going to pray for the Supreme Court.
for the judicial branch and for the areas of our nation that need it. Let's pray together. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Almighty, everlasting, triune God, the one who holds this world in perfect balance, the one who spoke it into existence, who knows all things, who sees all things, who judges men's heart, understands what is going on in the secret crevices of our minds, We ask for our justice system to be founded on you, yes. not on our anger or on our vengeance or on our desires, but on you. We humbly ask that it would be your justice. Yes. We humbly ask that our agendas would subside and that you would show forth. Father, we pray for our Supreme Court and the other justices that serve our nation. The weight that is on their shoulder on their, for their decisions, Father, we pray for wisdom, for discernment, for truth, for them to see through the smoke screens of politics and to rest in the truth of your word. Father, we also pray for the courts and the systems that are all the way down at the county level and the city level. We pray for lawyers and prosecutors, defense attorneys, and for those that are being charged. Lord, we pray that you would move in the ways where not only justice would happen, but reconciliation would happen, where people would be changed, not just locked up but that they would see transformation in their own lives. Father, I pray that you would give us wisdom, discernment, humility, peace, that we would do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Father, we ask this in your powerful name, and we ask that not only our decisions would be salted with your grace, but our lives would be manifesting your peace in ever-increasing number. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. My, pr my prayer today is for city, county, and state leaders. Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' most precious name. I come to you with great hope. I ask that in these times of trouble that you guide us, all the local, county, and state officials to make wise decisions based on the ways that you have taught us. I ask that you bring all of your people together and shield us from the things that divide us, such as partisan politics. I ask that you give us, or you guide us in ways that will close the gap between the left and the right. I also pray that people will once again become the priority of our leaders. Lord, help us all remember your words in Matthew 22, 36 through 40 that tell us to love God and love others. And as always, I want to remind people to be good to each other. Amen. Amen. Join me as we pray for our media. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for providing the freedom today that we may gather in your name and in your presence to pray. We thank you for the local WTLW and WTGN that's here today uh, broadcasting over our airways uh, the National Day of Prayer for Allen County. 
We thank you for the staff there and the listening audience that supports all of our local Christian stations. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to pray for the journalists, the editors, those with influence, those that can make decisions for what's playing on our local news and national news platforms. We pray for the truth to be presented without any bias and that those that are watching can discern on what's being presented. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask uh, as a great nation that was founded on many freedoms that we understand that each of us has the freedom to choose the media we consume. I pray that we guard our eyes, our mind, our heart, Lord, from what the enemy wants us to hear and how the enemy wants to use media to divide. Lord, I pray that the media can be used to unify around the gospel message, to share the message of how you demonstrated your love for us by providing your son Jesus as the atonement for our sins. On this National Day of Prayer in Allen County, let us fill our minds and our hearts with media that's honoring to you, dear Heavenly Father. Amen. I have a sign at my house that says, pray to end abortion. But I'm wondering if we're praying the right way. I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of confidence in the policy makers of our country right now to change the policy and the law. So how do we pray? Planned Parenthood gets billions of dollars from tax government, from tax money, and sports supports their program, their agenda of abortion. And yet right here in Allen County, heartbeat of Lima gets what we give them to support them, to give our kids a real choice. I was told at one time the same amount of people that were looking to adopt a child was the same amount of abortions that were happening annually in the United States of America. I thought, how tragic. Why can't we get those people together? I wonder how the abortion clinics can perform. They must have a high turnover rate with the job that they're dealt. So I'm asking you to pray maybe a little differently. Pray for those young ladies and sometimes the young man that's involved for conviction, for options and real choice. Pray that God would help give the same money and the same opportunities to Christian organizations to help give these kids a real choice. Because folks, the problem is this choice, it has consequences. And I pray that those young people will consider the consequences before they experience them. Because they're going to experience them. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you know someone that's ever been through it, we need to pray for them to be able to stand up and talk about the tragedy and the, the regrets that they have. I think those are some things we can pray for. So I'd ask you to join me now. Father, I, I'm just at a loss. Because we pray and we pray and so many times there's no answer. And God, we would love for the policies to be changed, the laws to be changed. But I'm not sure I have the confidence in our country to do that at this point. But God, we need to pray for resources for people that are doing the right thing and giving young ladies a real option. Teaching them how to be moms, teach them how to take responsibility. And even after that child is born, they bring them in and they give them counsel. And Lord, I just pray that we would have resources for what's really needed to give our young people real choices. And God, I pray for those that have had abortions, God, that you will be with them. And God, that you would help them to now be a voice, that they would recognize their mistake, that they would feel the conviction of your Holy Spirit. And God, I pray for those working there, that they'll no longer be able to work there. I pray they can't find anyone to work to perform them. God, we need you to move and intervene in our country and help us recognize it's more than a choice. It's the choice to end a life. God, help us to do our part. Amen. How many know that we are not our own, but we belong to him? We belong to Jesus. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. I'm not my own. I belong 
to him I've been washed in the blood of Jesus I'm not my own I belong to him you're not your own you belong to Jesus you're not your own you belong to him you've been washed in the blood of Jesus you're not your own and I'm not my own I belong to him we're not our own we belong to Jesus we're not our own we belong to him we've been washed in the blood of jesus i'm not my own and you're not your own and we're not our own we belong to him come on let's keep that hand praise just a little bit longer can we can we bless him real good come on that's not for the singer this is for our savior He deserves that kind of worship. I'm honored to be here to pray for our spiritual leaders and the churches. And to that end, I'd like to begin by reading Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 13. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Dear God, your word says for us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Now, Lord, forgive me of my sins and hear my prayers. God, we need your help for our spiritual leaders, dear Lord. Dear God, we pray the leaders will remain steadfast, that they will not get weary in well-doing. Strengthen their faith, dear Father. We pray that our leaders will diligently stay the course, put their hand to the plow in this season like never before. We pray that their confidence, their purpose, uh, their call, their gifting, and their anointing would not weary. Now, Father, I speak a word specifically over your pastors. You said in Jeremiah 3.15, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Lord, let the love that you have for, that they have for you, Lord, in their heart be displayed by obedience to the word that you have placed in their heart. Let the knowledge and understanding that they feed to your people from their mouth only be the word that has been given from your mouth. Increase your faith in the words that, that, that we preach, dear Lord, that, that we will perform it, that you will perform it if you have said it. Help your pastors to, to sense your presence in every way, dear God, like never before. Dear God, fill them with the fresh touch. And the power of your Holy Spirit, dear God, we, we pray for their courage and strength in this season. 
And dear God, we pray for your wisdom to increase in godly counsel and understanding and revelation. We pray that you will give your pastors clear godly directions for such a time as this. And Lord, I pray and decree that your pastors will, will live a life holy unto you. Will live a life humble before you and live a life hungry for you. Now, dear God, I, as we acknowledge that your church is the one church, dear God, a kingdom church of one people and one nation, the body of Christ, Lord, but, but you have given us individual churches for a place to assemble, to learn the foundational truths of how to worship and to serve you. In your word, it is clear that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. To that end, I pray for each individual church that has been established in your name. I pray for strength. I pray for support in each church. I, I pray that each church, Lord, would have the meat, the sufficient need in, in the storehouse. I pray for unity and oneness in each church, dear God, that there will be a spirit of agreement and you will command blessings there. I pray for steadfast dedication and commitment for each partner where you have set them, dear Lord. I decree a word of multiplication and increase over each and every ministry at each church that there will be no less or no need that they will find themselves in an exceedingly bonding season of not just surviving but a season of thriving and I lift all of these prayers supplications and declarations in the mighty name of Jesus amen and amen hallelujah bless his holy name I'm honored to pray for the spiritual harvest. Father, we just love you and we praise you and we glorify you. Oh God, we just thank you that we know that we are your children called by your name. Oh God, we just thank you for saving our souls and allowing us a place with you forever and ever. And not only that, Lord, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that resides on the inside of us, that brings conviction and change and challenge and empowerment and discernment. We thank you, Lord God, for being such an awesome God. You're incredible in all your ways. Oh, God, we thank you that you're good, Lord God. Even when we see destruction, you're good. Even when we see racial tension, you're good. Even when we see poverty, you're good. You're a mighty good God, and we praise you today. We lift you up, and we give you glory for being being such a tremendous God oh God and we know that you see all and Lord we're praying today for the spiritual harvest your word says Lord God in Luke chapter 10 verse 2 the harvest is plentiful but the laborers the workers of the kingdom are few and so father we come right now in the name of Jesus first of all asking for forgiveness of all of our sins oh God where we've fallen short and we haven't worked because we were tired or distracted we come right now in the name of Jesus asking that you would forgive us of our sins Lord God and bless us to do better pleasing unto your will Lord God we pray right now in the name of Jesus oh God that you would bless the unsaved souls in the harvest oh God that you would give them a spirit of wisdom and knowledge of you Lord God oh God that the hardened hearts will become become softened Lord God and tender so that when the labors come and they give your word they will be open to receive you as their Lord and Savior as we have done Oh God, I pray for the harvest right now. Oh God, I pray right now that you will remove strongholds of the devil. Oh God, that you will remove the scales off their minds, off their hearts, off their souls. Oh God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would arrest every spiritual wickedness in high places, every devil, every demon. Lord God, I pray that you would bind them up in the name of Jesus and give that heart an opportunity to receive you, Lord God, as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord God, that you remove the scales, oh God, and that you will release the unsaved, oh God, and that you would save them by the power of your might. Lord God, now I pray, Lord God, for the laborers, oh God, the laborers that are in the church, oh God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the workers for your kingdom, the ambassadors, the representation, Lord God, of your people will be evident in this dark world, oh God, that you would bless us to be strong and, and courageous and bold, Lord God, to to speak up and to speak out and to re give the word of salvation to the lost, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for the harvest, Lord God, that your angelic host will go out in the atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus and begin to gather those souls in the power 
of your Holy Ghost and in the power of your name and in the power of your glory. We pray for salvation today like never before. Oh God, we know the time is drawing near. No man know the hour or the time. Only the Father knows. Oh God, but we can see, Lord God, that the light is dim. Oh God, so I pray right now in the name of Jesus that those you have ordained to be saved in the harvest, Lord God, that you would save them today. Wake them up today in the name of Jesus. Wake them up, Lord God. Wake them up, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Give them a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, give them a praise. Several years ago, I was privileged to be on the stage for the first time. And right about the time that I'm getting up today, there was another pastor who rose, and he spoke about three to four times longer than all of the other pastors, and then he prayed. Well, as I was sitting there, I thought, boy, this guy thinks a lot of himself. Having not being, not being familiar with the program, afterwards I looked down at the schedule, and I saw, oh, he had the pastoral address. Good afternoon, I'm Pastor Nathan. I have the pastoral address today. <laughs> and now that I have spent 30 seconds of the 12 that I have, I wanna take you to Judges today. I believe that God wants to encourage and strengthen you today like never before, from the pulpit and the pastors and the politicians to those of you in the seats today. Judges chapter six, God says this, I brought you up out of Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. How many would just say that God has brought you out of bondage today? And I delivered you out of the hand of Satan and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear. Everyone say, do not fear. Do not fear, do not fear the gods of this world in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Just a year ago, approximately, there was a virus released on the earth, and with it a spirit of fear that has gripped man, woman, boy, and girl, and we seemingly cannot get loose from this spirit. God is saying today that he wants us to take courage and to receive his grace and strength to be released from fear. I'm a pastor, and I would say that generally pastors are to be examples. Pastors are those who have been chosen among men and women that have been called out to serve as examples, and those who should be, in some certain graces, examples of being free, uh, free from fear, examples of those that have faith that we can follow. But as I've talked to some of my fellow pastors here over the last year, I've talked to pastors that have said, I want to give up. I have no motivation. I've been in deep sorrow and deep depression. And I'll just tell you that I myself at times have thought about giving up. But God has a word for us today. And that is you should not fear, but we have not obeyed his voice before we have the remedy we have to have the diagnosis and the diagnosis church the diagnosis world is this God has said do not be afraid yet we have not obeyed his voice and part of the reason is what we are looking at come on teens what are you looking at and I would say this most of us are looking at our smartphones how many of you own smartphones here today now listen I'm not here on a tirade against technology I look at my cell phone just like everybody else but if you're like my teenage boys I'm constantly have to knock on their door and say hey you on that smartphone hey are you off that are you what are you looking at why we have a steady stream of information coming into us and oftentimes three quarters of the time it's not from the Word of God it's not the things that are edifying and sometimes you just got to turn it off don't shout me down because I'm preaching good someone said you throw out the smartphone you throw out three quarters of the problems that you have 
But now I come right down to where you live. I'm coming right down Main Street. Because believers, your problem is this. Sometimes we, we lose sight of what we need to be looking at. And of course, smartphones are, can be a distraction. But sometimes we look at the world and we say, man, they have it so easy. They seem to be walking on easy street. We're like Asaph. How many know who Asaph is? He was an anointed worship leader in Israel. When anyone thought about worship, when anyone thought about music, they thought about about Asaph. If someone thought that a problem could be solved, they would go to Asaph. He'd write him a nice little song and, and the anointing would break the oath. That, that's, that's just the kind of guy he was. But you need to know that he also had problems. And I think he informs us that when you and I look at the world for the resolution to our problems, if we look at the world and long after what we perceive they have, we're going to end up depressed. Listen to what Psalm says. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. You're ready for verse 2? He throws a contrasting conjunction in there and he says, But as for me, how many would just be willing to admit today that you've been struggling with fear because of the pandemic, because of these shaking in nations? I'm sure that most of us could say that I've been struggling. And because of it, our faith has fallen and fear has begun to rule and it has sullied and dirtied our hearts. He said, but as for me, notice what he says, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. And friend, if the best among us, if our leaders are falling because of fear, where does that leave you? Some of you are suffering in silence. You don't know what to do. You haven't been able to leave your house. You wonder about the stock market. You wonder about finances. And fear has gripped you. The problem is what you're looking at, but in the problem we also find the same solution the solution is to look to Jesus. In fact, Asaph doesn't leave us hanging on a sullen note. He says, I was that way until, everyone say until. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Once I got God's perspective, once I found God's prerogative, I realized that, oh, I'm just a little deceived right now. But if I simply look to Jesus, if I find him in his word and let the scriptures minister to my spirit, I'm going to find that fear will fade as the mist in the morning. What's the solution today? Where do we find resolution in politics? Where do we find resolution and solution at the national level? Are you ready for it? Here's the command for us today, church. Hebrews 12, 2. Look. Look. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I bring you right back to the beginning. I bring you right back to the old rugged cross. I bring you right back to the man who touched your life at the beginning. And he has told you that you do not need to fear. Come on, you remember the old hymn. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. Listen, what more can he say than to you he has said? What more needs to be said? He told you not to fear. He told you to rise up because you're a child of Almighty God. Amen. Who is this Jesus? I want to leave you with the most grand, glorious picture of the Son of God that I can give you. Who is this Son of Man? Who is this Divine One that has come from heaven, the Word incarnate? He's God Almighty who sits at the right hand of the throne of God, and He's ruling. He's not fearful. He's not afraid. But He's ruling today on His throne in heaven, and you can take it to the bank. Make no mistake about it. I've got to wrap this up. Make no mistake about it. That this thing from beginning to end, this terror that's been released on earth has one goal and one aim. Hear me. It's the body of Christ. What about politics? No, it's the body of Christ. In fact, if you want to get a vision and picture of who this Jesus is, Psalm 2 tells us. Listen to what it says. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth have set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Who are they taking counsel together against? Against the Lord and his anointed saying, let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. Whatever thing or whatever aim or goal you have thought 
These battles we're seeing break out all over. Whatever you thought, you need to know. The ultimate end is to destroy you because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can get you, if he can get these pastors, he's got the head and then he's got the body. And if he gets the head, he can get the body and he's destroyed us. <laughs> but Psalm 2 ain't done either. Jesus sits in the heaven and he laughs. It says that he will have them in derision. The very thing that they wish upon us, he brings upon them. And I've just got to address this because the, the tactic of the enemy is to divide and conquer. One of the attacks of division that we see right now, hotly contested, is coming from our sources of information. Our news outlets, our media outlets have a constant barrage of misinformation and propaganda to divide you and me based on our gender, based on our skin color, based on all of these things. If they can divide us, they will conquer us. I want to quote philosopher Charles Leus Barclayus former NBA player and pupil of Aristotle. That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> he spoke about this division that he sees. He says, man, I think most white people and black people are great people. I really believe that in my heart, but I think our system is set up where our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, are designed to make us not like each other so they can keep grasp of money and power. Woo! Come on, Charles Leos, Berkeleyus. <laughs> Preach the truth. The gatekeepers, the kings of the earth are controlling the information so that I could dislike you because of your skin color, so that you could be suspicious of me because of my skin color. Friends, I want to tell you today, we need to rise up and turn our eyes upon Jesus. You say, Pastor, what party are you in? I'm not in any party. Pastor, are you a Republican or Democrat? I'm neither. I'm Zionian. I'm from above. I come from the hill of Zion. And until we realize that, that there's no salvation to be found in Washington, until, there's, until we realize there's no salvation to be found on Twitter and Jack and Facebook, until we turn our eyes upon Jesus, we're not going to see a change because we will bow to the fear and the misinformation that they're feeding us. Listen to what Jesus said as I conclude. On that very day, some Pharisees came to Jesus saying, get out and depart from here for Herod wants to kill you. I don't know about you, but I feel our rights and our free speech is being encroached upon like never before. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus said to them, listen to what Jesus said. Go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons and do cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. You go and tell that fox that today I do cures and cast out demons and on the third day I will be perfected. When someone asks you what party you're, you're part of, say, go tell that fox, today I do cures, tomorrow I cast out demons and on the third day I will be perfected. Don't let people draw you into their partisan politics and to destroy the unity that Jesus wants to bring you. Amen. Friends, if it doesn't start here, I fear that we're in a rough ride in the United States like never before. There's a wedge being driven, and it's creating fear like we've never, never seen before. The solution is to turn our eyes on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. And can you stand and we'll sing that one more time? Please stand. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look
opportunity uh, for letting me come today. Um, I'm going to be reading Franklin D. Roosevelt's message, message to Congress that he gave on January 6, 1941. We look forward to a world founded upon four essential human freedoms. The first is freedom of speech and expression. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way. Then freedom from want and freedom from fear. This nation has placed its destiny in the hands and heads and hearts of its millions of free men and women and its faith in freedom under the guidance of God. Amen. Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts. We are so thankful for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. God, for your faithfulness in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you have given us authority in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us authority, Father, as your kingdom people in the earth. And so, God, today we lift up this national crisis of salvation sex trafficking, this national crisis of sexual addiction. We lift it up to you, O oh God. We come against every assignment and curse of the enemy to bring down these people, to bring bondage. We break its power in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak over them, Father, that there is freedom. We say, Father God, in Jesus' name, that every ring, every sex trafficking ring is going to be exposed and brought down in the name of Jesus. We decree that there will be justice executed. We decree that righteousness will rule and will reign. Father, we pray for every victim of sexual trafficking. Father, we pray for every woman, for every man, for every boy, for every girl. God, we pray for their deliverance from this bondage. We pray, God, for their protection. We pray for healing over their bodies, over their minds, over their emotions, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for restoring to them the years that the locusts have eaten. And God, we thank you that you are bringing down this diabolical, evil thing that the enemy has brought into the nations of the earth. And Father, we pray for every single person who is caught up in sexual addiction. Whether it's pornography, prostitution, sex trafficking, every other kind of sex addiction. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would bring conviction and would turn their hearts to you, O oh God. For God, where there is no demand, there is no need for a supply. So, Father, we ask, Lord, that you would bring, Father, that draw them by your Spirit to you. God, we need revival. We need revival in our churches, in our cities, in our nation, and in the nations of the earth. Let it start and begin with us, oh God. Father, we turn our eyes upon you. Jesus, we lift you up and we decree and you, we declare that you are king, that you are Lord. We lift you high and your word said and if you would be lifted up, you would draw all men unto yourself. So, God, we thank you for a move of God in our city and a move of God in our nation, O oh Lord, for the earth belongs to you. And we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God says in John 10:10 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give them life more full or more abundant. Father God, I pray right now for those that have believed on the lie that they are less than and that life is not worth the living. Father God, I lift up to all those right now, Father God, that are contemplating suicide, that are wrapped up in the addiction of drugs and alcohol and substance abuse that has 
clouded their thinking and clouded their minds to believe the lies of the devil that their life is not worth the living. Lord, I pray right now for those that are watching by television, that are listening by radio, either right now live or in the broadcast later in the day, Father God, if there is someone out there right now that is contemplating taking their own precious life, that they would not believe the lies of the devil, but they would believe the life that Jesus Christ offers, Father God. We pray over them, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that they might be transformed by the renewing of their mind, Father God. Then they will be able to test and to know what God's good, perfect, and pleasing will is. So, Father God, we lift up all of those that are contemplating suicide, all of those that have been affected by suicide, the parents, the loved ones who have had to suffer over the loss of someone who took their own life. We ask these things in Jesus' holy, precious name, Father God. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to pray for those who are battling with the COVID, their families, and those who have lost their lives. And so, Father, we come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we are reminded, O oh God, continually of how your word said in Isaiah 43, verse 16, Thus says the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. That, Lord, in the midst of this trying uh, epidemic in this time, Lord God, where we battle this virus, Lord, we think of those who have lost their lives to it. Lord, the families who are suffering and grieving because of the loss, we pray for them, O oh God, that you would raise them back up, Lord, and restore health and strength. And, Lord, give them life again, Father. And, Lord, out of this, O oh God, we thank you, Lord, that what the enemy meant for evil would be turned for good. Lord, the reality, O oh God, is that you are... Are the healer you sent the word to heal and to deliver us from every kind of sickness disease malady and malfunction and Lord every bit of the fear that comes with it father and so we thank you today for every single person that is in hospital rooms wherever they are Lord not in just this nation but around the globe Lord that they're fighting the fight Lord I pray oh God that faith will arise Lord give them strength Lord to overcome Lord you've made us more than conquerors Lord that we can defeat this enemy enemy like we've defeated other enemies like any giant Lord can be defeated father when we give you Lord the preeminence when we make you the source father I'm thankful today that Isaiah 53 gives me the encouragement Lord that you were wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisements for our peace was laid upon you and by your stripes we were and we are healed and so father we pray that right now Lord God that people would recover from this and Lord, that they would have good information, Lord. Lord, that the source, uh, Lord God, of uh, health and, and life, Lord, would be restored and that people would not be overwhelmed with this fear. And Lord, the power of this thing being broken, Lord, that we will rise up like we have before. We'll rise up against this. Lord, they predicted so many more would die and we're thankful that they didn't. And we're thankful, Lord God, for what you're doing in the midst of this to once again take what the enemies meant for evil and turn it for good. We thank you, Lord God, for the victory over this virus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Your grace has brought us safe thus far. Your grace will lead us home. This has been a tough year, but we've been through tough stuff before. We've been through depression and famine. We've been through the loss of our sons and daughters and mothers and fathers because they become martyrs. We've been through the black death. We are standing on the shoulders of giants who have persevered. And we thank you that you will help us persevere. I pray specifically for families as they battle through and come out of the pandemic. Two things. I pray that they would be a microcosm of the body of Christ. And I pray you will give parents wisdom, especially as it relates to how to shepherd their children through the whole social media, which is a pandemic all of its own. Father, we pray for our educators and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for them. Tough year, 
We pray that you would allow them to rest soon. And we pray for a return of normalcy. We also pray for our businesses, that they would not survive but thrive coming out of this. And that you would give some a new beginning. Father, we are yours. Our children are yours. Our churches are yours. Our businesses are yours. And we are glad of it. And we pray for your leadership in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, Teresa, thank you. This is our first time as well, and uh, we are so blessed to be here. She asked me to declare blessing before we sing this song, The Blessing. And uh, I'm not a speaker, and me and Jody are singers, but uh, as I ask God, what do you want to bless? <laughs> and I have to share this. When we were getting ready this morning to come, I just invited Holy Spirit to come with us, as most of you guys probably did as well. And he said, oh, my spirit will be there. But I want to come as the Lion of Judah today, <laughs> and I want to roar. <laughs> and so he led me to Revelation, and it said, Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loosen its seven seals. You alone are the only one worthy, God. And so we sing a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. So God, right now, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. May we bow down low before you, God. May every tribe and every tongue represented in this room and region and nation be overtaken by your presence today. May our hearts be changed and transformed, not to just sit on the good news, but to go into all the world and preach the gospel and your word. So right now, God, I don't ask you to bless our titles and our positions. I don't ask you to bless our buildings, but I ask you to bless our obedience, yes. bless our unity in Christ Jesus, yes. bless our family unit, and bless us with your presence right now, God. Bless us with an outpouring of your spirit, God. Bless our city and our nation, God, with people who are willing to go in the highways and the byways and share the good news. Bless us with shepherds, God, that have hearts for their sheep and shepherds that cannot be bought or hired, yes. that they are truly tethered to the heart of Christ and they have a heart for their sheep and they will die for their sheep and they will lay down their lives for their sheep. Make your face, Jesus, shine upon the homeless in our city, the drug addict, the fatherless child, the widow, Father God, the single mom. And God, I ask you to raise up a generation that knows how to oppose the kingdom of hell by obeying the voice of their father in heaven even when it's not popular in the name of Jesus amen oh come on can we just stand on our feet he's worthy to be praised
family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning and the evening and the coming and the going and the weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 in me. Do you? 
Because I'm going to count on three. I'm going to get it out with a hallelujah. I'm sorry, but I'm going to yell, okay? I'll step this way so you don't have to have it hurt your ears. But on the count of three, you hurt my ears, all right? Because I can't contain this, okay? <laughs> hey, one, two, three. Just this little administrator joy when God gives you the idea and then you see it come out and you see a minute, you go, I hit the mark, we hit the mark. Holy Spirit is pleased. And he did show up, amen. Oh, so good, so good, so good. So thank you all for coming. We're going to go out with, of course, we've got to have the blow of the shofar. Doesn't that just stir you to go forth? Okay, we'll bring her on up here. Thank you all.